Story time! So a couple years back when I went to visit my family in Canada, this was back when the scariest thing was Trump being president and not the all-consuming pandemic. I was on a long-haul flight and I was seated beside this elderly Filipino couple. They said that I reminded them of their son, whom they were visiting as well, and they, and they then offered to share some of the food they brought on with me. First of all, Second of all, how the f*** did they even manage to bring it on? I mean, these were like several thin cuts worth of food. I mean, not that I'm complaining. I'm not complaining. But yeah, being the shameless fella that I am, I obviously said yes and went on to stuff my face. And honestly, these were some of like the best Filipino food that I've had. There was sinigang, pak siu, kare kare. There was even dinaguan, which is pork's blood for some of you guys who don't know. The one dish that comforted me the most was the pork belly adobo. It was insane how comforting it was and the fat just melts in your mouth it's sweet it's savory it's sour it's just great which is why i'm so excited and inspired to make this dish today now it's not gonna be traditional so my dear filipino friends please don't at me i'm just trying to do good by the incredibly gracious couple that fed me some years back so let's jump right into it So right off the bat, you'll need about 700 grams of pork belly. And I love getting them at the neighborhood wet markets just because it's fresh and it's hassle-free. You can tell them exactly what cuts you're looking for and they can sort of just process it for you straight away. So that's, that's, that is always my preferred solution. And also it's kind of fun to visit the wet market. Off the bat, you're gonna want something with the skin on and with just a bit of fat on it. Put that away and get yourself a big bowl for your marinade liquid. Toss in two teaspoons of salt, a sprinkle of MSG, followed by two tablespoons of sugar, one teaspoon of ground black pepper, one pot of star anise, smash four cloves of garlic, pour in a third of a cup of light soy sauce, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, followed by one liter of water. Don't be like me and forget to add three bay leaves as well. Then mix them thoroughly until everything is well combined. Grab a big Ziploc bag and in goes your thick slab of goodness. Now you may be tempted to pour the liquid in right from the bowl, but I'm here to tell you, don't eat your backside. Just use a ladle and carefully spoon it in. Try to get as much air out of there as possible. Then grab a pot or a pail or container that is big enough for your sous vide setup. Now you want to make sure that you put in enough water when your Ziploc bag is in or it will make this noise. Another pro tip is to use the water pressure to squeeze more of the air out. Leave the fella in the spa for 8 to 10 hours at 165 Fahrenheit or 74 degrees Celsius. Remember to also add in water every couple of hours or the fella will go. When that's done, take her out of the tub. Take your pork belly out and rest her on a drying rack. Go ahead and toss the rest of the liquid out cause it's salty as shit. At this point in time, you want to do three things. First, pat your baby dry with kitchen towels. Second, using a meat tenderizer or a really sharp fork, you're going to punch some holes on the skin of the pork belly. Remember not to penetrate it too hard or it'll fall apart. Lastly, you're gonna wanna salt the skin. This is to extract even more moisture. Admittedly, I forgot to do this part entirely, which may or may not have led to dire consequences later on. After that, you can go ahead and let that dry in your fridge overnight. So while that fella chills out, we can go ahead and prepare some toppings. We're gonna finally slice up some shallots or small red onions into small rings. Then in a saucepan, add in just enough oil to cover your onions and toss them in while the oil is still cold. The reason for this is because these motherfuckers overcook super easily. So starting from cold oil will allow you more control during the process. You also want to get a pair of chopsticks to stir constantly to separate these buggers and ensure more even cooking. The onions will continue to cook after you pull it out so you gotta get them out of there when they are lightly brown. Like this. Sieve them out and let them rest in some kitchen towels and you will have one of the most elite toppings. 
Feel free to do the same with garlic slices if you're feeling a bit cheeky. You also just made some onion aroma oil, so make sure to keep that as well. As for the adobo sauce, grab a saucepan and whack in 2 thirds of a cup of light soy sauce, 2 tablespoons of brown sugar, 2 tablespoons of neutral oil, 4 bay leaves, 3 teaspoons of ground black pepper, 4 cloves of crushed garlic, 2 thirds of a cup of full fat coconut milk, and lastly a third of a cup of apple cider vinegar. Pop it on the stove and let it come to a boil. Then turn down the heat and let it simmer for 10 to 15 minutes. And it should turn into a beautiful chocolate color like that. So simple, but such an umami bomb. Now before we get to the main event, I'm gonna go ahead and cook up some rice. This is kind of weird, but does anyone else keep their rice in the fridge? Like, does it actually help it last longer? Anyway, don't forget to wash your rice. Rinse and repeat until water appears clear. Drain well, then using a 1 is to 1 ratio, add in the amount of water you need. Pop it into the rice cooker, press the button and you are done. No steaming in a pot, no microwaving, this is it. Oh my god! Now for the grand finale, the pork belly. After resting overnight, you can really feel the skin on this guy dry out. Pat it once more just to remove any excess moisture. What you want to do at this point is to slice it up into serving slices and score it this way so it's easier to chop it up when the skin's all nice and crispy. Once again, you want to make sure that you only cut the skin layer. Now before we get to the next part of the video, I just want to say that this part might get a bit dangerous, especially if you forgot to salt your pork belly like I did. Normal warning. <laughs> it's actually not a joke. So for the daredevils out there, fill a big pot with canola oil less than halfway up. You want to make sure that you are able to submerge your pork belly in the oil. Get the heat up to 190 degrees celsius and in goes your pork belly. Now if your pork belly doesn't dry up enough, this is what happens. So please exercise reasonable precaution here. Now the pork is already cooked all the way through, so you just need a couple of minutes to crisp up the skin. Alternatively, if you're not in the mood to burn your face off, wrap your pork belly in aluminum foil like so and toss it in an air fryer at 200 degrees celsius for 20 to 25 minutes. And you should get a similar crackling skin. Chop up some spring onions and pick out some coriander leaves. And lastly, slice up your fried pork belly. I mean, just take a look at this guy. Gather it with generous spoonfuls of your sauce, top it off with fresh spring onions and coriander. And don't forget to use your fried shallots like I did. No God! No God! Please no! No! I firmly believe that you cannot eat this without a bowl of white rice and a fried egg with a runny yolk. And now I think it's only right to take a moment to admire your work. Hello! Oh, I know, it's it's not traditional. Please don't flame me. But I've learned that this is one of those things where everyone thinks that their version is the best. So, f*** it, I'm gonna dig in. For me, the obvious way to eat this is to get a bit of rice, put some egg on it. Obviously, don't forget the egg yolk. And then get a nice piece of this, put it on there. Some of that sauce. Oh yeah. Make sure you got some of the coriander and spring onion in there. I mean, I, I know some of you guys don't like coriander, but whatever floats your boat, man. I think I need a bigger spoon. Actually, I think I need a bigger mouth. So that is my perfect bite. And all you have to do is choo-choo train this guy into your mouth. Cheers. Mmm. 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 <laughs> guys, <laughs> I think I hacked it, man. I got it lah, guys. The pork has a crackling, crispy skin thanks to the deep frying, which was quite the war I had to fight, by the way. It's like a combination between like Chinese roast pork and the pork belly adobo that we're eating here. I mean, it's just oozing out the juice. The meat is so tender, it falls apart. The fat melts in your mouth. The sauce is so unctuous. Not to mention that the flavor has penetrated it completely. The yolk is great, right? The yolk is just like a like a cheat code for, for extra 
your richness. But I have to give a special shout out to the coriander and the spring onions here. I mean, it really just gives it like a fresh kick and lifts everything up. All in all, a major savory bomb. Oh my god, it's so fucking good. I'm really, really excited for you guys to try this, man. If you enjoy this, please do leave me a like and subscribe, and I'll be so grateful. And also to that beautiful, generous couple that fed me on that fateful flight. This one's for you guys. <laughs>